Good afternoon. So uh, we're going to talk about distal femoral fractures a little bit, and uh, th we just look at lots of pictures that show that we do lots of different things. So this is a retrograde nail. This is a type of uh, locking plate. This is a different type of locking plate with an adjunct, adjunct plate on the uh, medial side. This is a retrograde nail through a knee. Uh, and, you know, there's multiple different options. And I'm not going to talk today about all of the different operative strategies that we might pursue. This is just a metal fest around a femur. Um, the reality is that when you're confronted with a distal femoral fracture, you've got lots of choices to make. And um, unfortunately, we haven't got an awful lot in the box to give us the answer as to how best to go forwards. And when you go and you look at the research about distal femoral fractures, what you find is there's really very, very little of it. So just recently, in 2015, there was an audit done across some of the big uh, centers in the UK, um, and this was one of the take-home messages. So we don't understand or we don't, have a, we don't have a good candidate for the best fixation, and beyond that, we don't even know how to weight bear our patients after uh, surgery. There's a belief amongst some people that weight bearing in distal femoral fractures is risky. It leads to uh, fixation failure. Um, but probably amongst the exponents of early mobilization, they would agree that they haven't seen uh, an excess of complications. So what research is out there? This is a, um, a plot that some of you might be familiar with. It comes from, from a systematic review. It's, uh, it's called a risk of bias table, and it basically grades the quality of of the studies. And down the left-hand side of this table, you can see numerous studies uh, across quite a long time period. And then there's, across the top, is lots of different characteristics of a good study. And it's a traffic light system. So <coughs> yellow is I don't really know. Red means it was bad, and green is good. And as is pretty typical for trauma research, there's not much green on that table. So what that tells you is the quality of the evidence base in and around distal femur is both sparse and it's pretty poor quality. But if you extract the data from those studies, accepting that the quality is pretty low, then is there any difference between different ways that we treat our patients? And there's lots of different analyses, but this is probably the headline analysis. And if you compare plates, so modern locked plates with retrograde nails, then what you see is there's a trend towards an improved functional outcome with nails. And it's not statistically significant. So you can see that the, the error bars run across the line of no change, which is the vertical line here. So I looked at the Australian registry while I was uh, in Australia and Melbourne. They have a really fantastic outcomes registry across the whole of Victoria. It has patient-reported measures, and it records lots of accurate details about uh, fractures and how they're treated. In, it's a bit like the TARN database. And what we found was an almost identical result to the uh, systematic review that we did, which is there's a trend towards an early improved functional result with nailing as opposed to plating. So that's pretty much a summary of all the evidence that actually exists about distal femoral fractures, which is not very much, um, so I can't tell you how to do it. But NICE have given us a steer, uh, which is to consider advising immediate unrestricted weight bearing. And that's quite clumsy English. If you read that, you think, what are they talking about? Well, that's because it's written in NICE code. And actually, what they mean is, we think probably on balance over a cup of tea, sat in the room where we made up the guideline, but we haven't actually got any evidence to back it up that you should advise immediate unrestricted weight bearing as tolerated. So I haven't got a right or wrong answer for you, but there's great variation about how people manage these fractures. What I would say is we have to rely on our first principles here, and the distal end of the femur is just the top end of the femur turned round. The patients look exactly the same. You fix the femur, in nearly all other cases in order to promote mobilization. So restricting patients uh, with distal femoral fractures doesn't make much conceptual sense. 
Have we got a way forwards? Yes, we do. There's two studies coming up. Shameless plug here. So Traffix is a distal femoral fracture fixation study comparing nails and plates. It's going to be opening in the UK shortly. And K4 is a study comparing arthroplasty with fixation for distal femoral fractures. Thanks very much.